Hey there, and welcome back to the Life with Old Dogs podcast. This is season five, and we are discussing caring for yourself while you care for your senior German Shepherd. And in this episode in particular, we are discussing your mental health. <laughs> okay, you, uh, you know, being a caregiver can definitely, definitely affect your mental health. So let me start by saying that um, just for clarity purposes, if anytime you have a dog, you're, you're a caregiver, you know, you're more of a caregiver when they're a puppy, you know, maybe because they're having little accidents on the floor or they're chewing on your recliner <laughs> or, you know, um, they're just being naughty or whatever, or biting on your hand because they're teething and, and they, they require more time and attention. Okay. And then, of course, once they're a little bit older, um, they're more go with the flow. They know the routine. They know the drill. Food's great. Exercise is great. Diet, you know, all that stuff. Everything's great. Health is great. So you kind of coast a little bit more, right? But then when they become seniors, things might start to creep up. Um, not with every senior German Shepherd, but with some, some, most maybe, things start to creep up. Things like some sort of dysplasia, hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, um, arthritis, degenerative myelopathy, um, certain cancers, things of, of those um, that nature. Uh, they start to creep up. And then as they become geriatric, now that's like 10 and above, okay? German Shepherds are, are considered seniors like between 8, 7, 8, and uh, 10 years old, and then they're considered geriatric by the time they're, they're 10 and above. So once you get to that point, then there's more, even more of a likelihood that, that um, those things that I've already mentioned are going to be present in the German Shepherd's life. Um, um, and and they're, they require even more care, kind of like they did when they were a puppy. But now you have this big German Shepherd and not this little puppy. So um, it can be physically taxing as well. Um, so it is important to take care of your mental well-being while you are caring. You are a hands-on caregiver to your older German Shepherd. And the reason for that is if you don't take care of your mental well-being, okay, then there's like this trickle effect. Then your diet goes to crap and you don't work out or, you know, exercise as much as you should. And then your, your physical health starts, you know, going downhill and you just become drained and depleted and you're not, you're not caring for yourself. There's no way. You don't have anything to give this older German Shepherd, you, you know, you can't really possibly care for your older German Shepherd if you can't even care for yourself. All right. So it, it starts with your, your mind, your mental well-being. Um, <clears throat> so what are some signs that you're struggling to care for your older German Shepherd? Uh, well, there's, there's plenty. And I've, I've probably experienced every single one, um, sometimes at some points, multiple, um, multiple signs of really what's caregiver stress. And we have another blog post all about that with a little cute infogram that shows you like what the signs are and how you can help yourself. And But let me just breeze through them here right now. Um, <clears throat> some of the signs are you're, you're, you're depressed you're anxious, you're nervous, um, you, you don't have much interest in things that you like to do, you have sleep disturbances, um, your diet is awful, uh, you know, you might be craving things more like sugary and carby and just junky, like, you know, high fat, empty calorie nonsense that's just quick and convenient. Um, <clears throat> you might be drinking things that you don't typically drink, like, you know, maybe instead of having one glass of wine, you're having two or three or a couple extra beers or something along those lines that you, you don't typically do. Um, you're, you're, you know, not, I don't want to say substance abusing, but, um, just maybe medicating yourself that way a little bit more, um, than, you know, just, hey, I'm just sitting here and enjoying a glass of wine. You're, you're actually like, you feel like you need it just to get your, you know, your mind right. Um, <clears throat> so there's headaches. That's another thing. Headaches. 
um, irritability, you're cranky, um, you know, you just like say to yourself or even other people, I I can't do this anymore. You know, maybe it's time to say goodbye to my older German shepherd. Um, When you know in reality, you're really not there yet. I mean, they do have quality of life still. They just need extra support at that time in their life. So if you start feeling that way, um, it's definitely time to step back and take take some time to yourself. What is it that you like to do? Do you like to do you like to go for a ride? Do you like to go fishing? Do you like to garden? Do you like to do some sort of crafts? Do you like to binge watch Netflix? I mean, it doesn't matter. It's really whatever it is that you like to do. You need to carve time into your schedule to do some things that you like to do. Okay. And you love your dog. You love your older German Shepherd with all of your heart and you want you want what's best for them. I get that. I really do. But you still have to step back and just focus on you, whether it be for a half hour every day, maybe, you know, a half a day a week or wherever you can fit it in. You have to, I'm telling you, you have to do this or else you're just not going to be any good to your, um, you're not going to be of service, I should say, to your older German shepherd. So here, here are some things that I like to do. So I've, I've been exclusively, um, rescuing and providing lifelong care for older German shepherds since 2007. I've been a dog rescuer since 2000, but exclusively for Woody's Place since 2007. So this is a long time, right? And one of the big questions I get asked is, how do you keep doing this? How do you keep caring for these older big dogs and then saying goodbye to them and going back and getting, you know, more and doing it over and over again? Well, there's lots of times I don't feel like I can and I want to step away. But at the end of the day, it's because I take time for myself. And sometimes people think taking time for yourself is is greedy or stingy or self-centered. It's not. It's not. You have to. You have to. It's it's imperative because basically what you're doing when you're doing that is you're you're recharging. You're recharging. And then whatever you do with that charge is up to you. And if it's, you know, I want to take care of my older German shepherd for as long as he he is with me, then you have that energy and spirit to give him. But if you don't, then you're not you're not you're not going to be able to do that for too long. So here, here's what I do. Um, one time a year, I make myself go on a week-long vacation, 10-day vacation. And for me, I, I typically go out west. Um, I am not a shore person at all. I don't really love tropical weather or anything like that. I mean, I am, a, I am like a mountain person through and through. And a country girl through and through. I love the mountains. I love lakes. I love rivers. I love wide open spaces. I don't want to see people like on a regular basis, you know. So um, I want my hands in the earth planting something. I want to be walking in the woods. Um, you know, I want to see sunrises and sunsets. I just want to, you know, I'm, I love that. And I'm an introvert. So I typically gravitate to the Rocky Mountain states, particularly Wyoming. I'm going to live there someday. I'm telling you, don't be surprised. I love, love places like that. So I I gravitate to places like that. I'll take my pen and my paper um, and I'll decide, um, like this last Last July, I took my grandson, my 12-year-old grandson, and we went to Colorado, we went to Wyoming, we went to Idaho, Oregon, and Washington, and then I visited my son and his family out in Washington State. That's, you know, we spent a few days there, but I wanted to show my grandson um, Yellowstone, um, the Tetons, um, Baker City, Oregon. I wanted him to see the Oregon Trail. I wanted him to see a dinosaur museum out in Wyoming and just really take in the sights and the scenery. And um, that's it. That's pretty much what I do. And I get, I get, I get very nervous, like thinking about planning and um, 
you know, the dogs and not being with the dogs because I truly want to be with the dogs all the time, but I know it's not healthy for me to do that. Um, I then I have this fantastic woman. Her name is Andrea. And she knows these dogs like the back of her hand and, you know, even the cats. And she also is uh, sort of like a farm girl. So she she's great with um, my goats and my chickens. You know, we have a little homestead here as well. That helps with my mental health. And she she's she's extremely hands on. She's very knowledgeable. She's very thorough. I don't have a thing to worry about. So it's her and Mr. Woody's place. And our youngest son, Tristan, who help out with the um, dogs while I'm away. So I really don't have to worry, you know, that they're not being cared for properly or, or something bad is happening or whatever. I don't. I, I have um, peace of mind knowing that they're good. So once I get over the stress of planning, preparing to go away is another thing. It's a lot to prepare to go away. Um, I'm not talking about just like flight tickets and car rentals and packing. I'm talking about literally like everything for the dogs, like preparing, making sure all their beds are clean, their blankets are clean, all their food is prepared, medications are labeled, you know, who gets what at what time, on what days, you know, and all that stuff. Um, So it's a lot. It's a lot to get ready. But once I get past all that, I get off the plane, typically in Denver, I get off the plane, get my car, and then that's it. I can just feel the stress melting away. And I do. I think about the dogs. I have cameras set up all over. I can literally check in anytime I want to see what's going on. Um, I check in with the people caring for them while I'm away regularly, um, but not so much that like um, I'm micromanaging or I just can't let go. Um, It's just like, you know, every now and again, hey, text message, hey, how's it going? What's going on? You know, can you send me a picture of the dogs? Whatever. Um, Just to kind of keep tabs to make sure that everything's okay. But like I said, not enough that I'm still stressed because, you know, I'm still the caregiver because I'm not. I, I, I took off that hat and I gave it to a responsible person or persons in this case, case while I go away and recharge recharge my my body and my mind and my soul. <laughs> so I do that. I make myself go away once a year and I come back feeling like a brand new person. Truly, I feel like a brand new person. I feel like I want a million bucks, really. And uh, I'm so excited to see the dogs and they're excited to see me. And then eventually we, you know, get back into the swing of things. Um, if I can If I can't do that, uh, let's just say I have a senior in my care who has degenerative myelopathy. And I I keep going back to that because that's what we get the most of um, when it comes to really hands-on caregiving is degenerative myelopathy. That's a big one for us. So let's just say I have um, a, a resident here that's, you know, he's to the point where he's like starting to defecate on his pillow or his bed. Sorry. Um, he, he needs a harness. I have to help him up, um, with a harness. He he really can't stand, um, on his own accord, his back end without a harness on. Um, you know, he, he may or may not be in a wheelchair just yet. And if he's not, he's getting there. So basically my point is he still has quality of life. You know, we're not to the point where we need to say goodbye just yet, but I'm extremely hands-on at this point. And no, I cannot think about going away at this time, you know, (laughs) you know, checking out the Rocky Mountain States and doing something like that. Um, So what I do then is I leave for short periods of time where, you know, um, so I'm in the lake region of the Poconos. Okay, that's where the sanctuary is located. And it's gorgeous here. It's gorgeous here. Uh, You know, I have some friends that, you know, from school, it's like, what do you do? What do you do up there? What's to do up there? Well, I'm an introvert and I am a country girl and I love nature. So there's lots and lots to do here for me. I like to kayak. I'm in the lake region of the Poconos. There's no shortage of lakes here to kayak in. I fish. I hike. Um, I take joy rides, just riding down country roads, taking in scenery, taking pictures of, you know, see, like the the forest, the Delaware State Forest is only, you know, two miles from here. Um, I'll go there, take pictures of wildlife and whatnot. Uh, there's antique stores here, lots of antique stores here. 
and um, things of that nature. So I will do those things. Um, if, if it's only for a half hour or, you know, 15 minutes or whatever, I'll go just out in nature. We have woods right behind, you know, the house here. I'll just go walk in the woods. I have a bench in the woods. <laughs> I'll just go sit in the woods. It's like high up in our woods. Our woods is like, it's kind of like a plateau and I put it at the highest point and, uh, behind the woods is a giant field and I'll go sit up there and just watch the sunset. So here I am, literally a stone's throw from the, the sanctuary. And I can be back in the house in a few minutes if I see something on the camera that needs to be addressed right away. But I'm still decompressing and letting the stress, um, any stress that I may have melt away. Uh, another thing that I do is um, we have... Uh, it, there's a place called the Holly Silk Mill. It's the world's largest bluestone building, and it's historic, and it's like this giant castle, and there's a fantastic coffee house there, and that's where my, my gym is as well, where I go and I work out. So I will go there, and I'll maybe just grab some coffee I'll sit there and I'll look at the building. So you have the building here and the coffee house is over here and the parking lot's in front. And off to the side over here is this panoramic view um, of mountains and, and the Lackawaxen River. And I'm telling you, it's breathtaking. It's really pretty. I'm like going off a little bit here. It's gorgeous here. Um, I feel really, really fortunate to be here. And I, I often say, you know, 12 million people don't come here annually because it's a dump. I mean, it's it's really, really beautiful here. So it's hard to feel stress in an area like this um, if you're a person who loves nature because it's just everywhere. Um, <clears throat> so literally just even going out for a ride and just driving around helps me decompress if I only have a few minutes to spare. That at least helps me recharge a little bit and then come back and then I can deal with whatever I have to deal with. Now, if you're in a situation where, you know, you can't do that, you need to enlist some help. You, you I have help. I, I don't do everything by myself. I mean, sometimes I will be here all day long um, waiting for Mr. Woody's place to come home. If I have a senior German shepherd in my care who really just can't, you know, get around by himself or um, because of cognitive disability or mobility issues. And I will wait for Mr. Woody's place to get home. I'll wait for him to get a shower, get himself situated, decompressed, whatever. And they'll be like, hey, I have to go to the grocery store and I need for you to keep an eye on so-and-so. Um, so I have, you know, we have like that team, um, my son, Tristan, um, is also only a few miles up the road. I can call him if I need something or volunteer. Karen also lives down the road. I could always, you know, rely on her to, to, uh, help out and sit with, um, a senior German shepherd in, in, um, in my care for a half hour or so if, if I need it. So if you're in, in a situation where you have an older German shepherd and maybe, you know, you live by yourself and you're in a situation where you're like, I, I'm tearing my hair out here. I love my dog so much, but I have to get away. I have to get away just for a little bit to go get a cup of coffee or to go for a ride or, you know, to get, take a yoga class or meditate or something like that. You need to enlist some help. You need to reach out to a neighbor or a family member, or if you don't have somebody like that that you can reach out to, um, contact your local veterinarian, the veterinarian you use, and um, contact the veterinarian that you use and ask them if they know of a dog sitter that they could recommend, or if there is a vet assistant or a vet tech who may be looking to make a little extra money um, and can sit with your older German shepherd for, you know, an hour or two a week while you go and just decompress. Um, so, you know, there are options and, and it is definitely not something you should be going alone. Uh, okay. So that being said, and if, if you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, 
I'm trying to take care of myself. I'm taking a few minutes, you know, to myself to just go sit out on the front porch and, you know, watch the hummingbirds at the feeder or I'm I'm taking a ride or maybe I'm indulging a little shopping therapy and I'm still feeling like I'm I'm just so tense and I'm nervous and I'm upset and, you know, it's not time to say goodbye, but this caregiver thing is a little bit too much for me. Then it's time to reach out for um, professional help. Maybe speak to a therapist, um, join a support group. Woody's Place has a, a, a degenerative myelopathy support group. And I'll make sure the link is in the show notes um, to this video and podcast. Um, it's right through our Facebook page. It's free. And um, it is definitely for people who have dogs with degenerative myelopathy, um, but you can go on there and you can say anything really about your dog with degenerative myelopathy. You know, I just found out my dog has degenerative myelopathy. I'm just heartbroken over this. You know, who else has had this experience? I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. I, I need to learn about it. Maybe you could help me. Um, or... Geez, you know, we're we're in the throes of degenerative myelopathy. I love my dog so much, but he pooped on his bed again, and I'm having to clean it up. And this is just so hard because I'm having to lift him as he's cleaning. And he's, you know, a big dog, and I'm not a big person. And it, it's really, you know, physically challenging for me. Um, <clears throat> I'd really love to hear uh, how you deal with this or your thoughts on it. Um, or a big one, how do I know when it's time to say goodbye? Um, my dog is in, in, at this point in, in his life right now, you know, he might have canine cognitive disability and, um, d doggy dementia and you go to let him out the door and he just, he just stands there and he's not really sure, you know, he doesn't have the mobility issues. He can go out physically, you know, but mentally he's not there and he, he's just standing there and he's looking out the door and so you, you know, you help guide him outside and he just stands there like he's not really sure what's happening or, or what's going on. And then you help him back inside and he pees on the floor <laughs> yeah. because he's confused because he has no idea. So you, you start getting to that point, like, when is it time to say goodbye? And that that ushers in this whole host of emotions that wreak havoc really on your mental well-being. So that group is really phenomenal. It's a judgment-free zone. I personally monitor it. <laughs> so I make sure that there is no uh, criticism, um, um, harsh words or judgments or, or anything like that. Um, so check it out. Like I said, I'll, I'll be sure to leave it in the show notes and um, it, it's, a, it's a good deal. It's definitely a good deal. <clears throat> All right. Let me see here. Okay. Another thing that I, I want to add about um, your mental health while being a caregiver for your, your older German Shepherd is you need to be kind to yourself. I, I say this all the time. You know, you have to be kind to yourself. If, if you're having a tough day, um, you've, you've had to clean the blankets on the bed, you know, two or three times because maybe, maybe your German shepherd is, uh, has some, is urinary incontinent and, um, he's, he's dribbled a little bit and, you know, you can smell it and okay, you're having to clean him and then you're having to clean the, the, the blanket that's, that's on the bed and all that stuff. And, you, you know, you've got like this mountain of wash that you're trying to keep up with because you have a whole other life still, right? You got your house to clean, your family to take care of, your job, you know, um, maybe maybe there's, you know, kids that have to be run around to different activities and stuff like that. Um, be kind to yourself. You, you have to be kind to yourself. So if you can only complete a small task, just complete that small task. The rest will be there at some other time. Okay. And, and if, if, if it's something that needs to be addressed right away, enlist help. You know, if you have kids that can help out, get your kids to help out. If you have a spouse that can help out, get your spouse to help out. If you have friends that are willing to help, get your friends to help out, but just be okay with the small tasks that you complete. And remember that 
this it's not going to last forever. This this is not going to last forever. Degenerative myelopathy in dogs does not last forever. Canine cognitive disability does not last forever. Our senior German shepherds don't last forever. Okay, so you basically are being the the hands on caregiver and trying to make these memories still with your senior German shepherd. All right, you're you're trying to make these last few moments, days, weeks, months, years, whatever, with your senior German shepherd the best that they can possibly be, because when he passes, you are going to be left with these memories. And you don't want to look back with regret. Trust me on this. Okay. I, I mean, I've, I've been down this road more times than I can count. Um, and you don't want to be left with regrets. You want to be left with, okay, this is, this is hard. I just lost, you know, my, my best friend here. I just lost my senior German shepherd. The end was not, um, easy because I, I was a, a hand or, or caregiver um, quite a bit and it was hard, but it was worth it. And I was able to send him across the rainbow bridge knowing I did everything I could for him and kept him as comfortable as possible for as long as possible. And I still was able to take care of my mental well-being and myself at the same time, you you want to be left with those kind of memories, all right? Then, uh, then it was just so hard, and I was so stressed, and I couldn't sleep, and I gained fifteen pounds because I was constantly freaking out and taxed, and I never had any time for myself. And you know, you just don't want that. You don't want those memories, right? You want them to be a, a good thing and not a bad thing. So. Um, Small tasks, be happy with them. Remember to eat right. Try to get enough sleep, even if you have to have your your senior German shepherd's bed right next to you. You you know, move it. <laughs> it's not a permanent thing, right? You can move it. And this way, if you wake up during the night and you're just curious, you can look over and see, okay, they're laying there. They're sleeping. I know everything's okay. You know, and you could go off to sleep yourself. Um, again, meditation, yoga. Um, smile, right? Laugh. Watch a funny video online. Um, there's plenty of those out there, especially with TikTok. You know, watch it, watch a funny video. I'm not saying get all engrossed into that, but you know, if you're feeling down, watch something that's gonna make you smile. Um, speak with someone that you know they're gonna lift your spirits, okay? And uh, let's see. I think that's about all I have, um, except for take it day by day. That's the other thing. Take it day by day, because when you are a, a, a hands-on caregiver to a senior German shepherd, that's the only thing you can do, is take it day by day. And remember that, like I said, it's not going to be forever. And you want to be left with positive memories of that transition from, okay, they needed help, and now they're now they're across the rainbow bridge. All right. So that's it. That's all I have for this week. Um, next week, we are focusing on diet. And this is a big one for me. Um, I am horrible. And I can, I can admit this openly. I am awful, awful about getting stressed and worked up and anxious and then just grabbing, like, especially during like the holidays and, you know, with Woody's place and then the holidays, because there's just so much going on, uh, my diet just goes to crap. <laughs> it just, you know, it's, I just want sugary, carby, junky stuff that I know is no good for me. And truly, I mean, within like a day or so, I, I start feeling awful, both mentally and physically, because I'm, I'm just loading myself with, Things my body doesn't not, not only doesn't need, but also is 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 bad for me. So we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about that and um, ways to combat uh, making sure that, or ways to combat um, wanting that quick fix and just grabbing for you know something quick and junky just to you know make sure you have something in your stomach. 
All right. So that is it. Until next time, folks, be well and give your senior German Shepherd a big hug.